Hey everyone, welcome back to another The Problem With. Today we're going to talk about John Kent as Superman and why I don't think it works at all. And there's a number of reasons and I'm going to explain John Kent's history and why I don't think John Kent as Superman and the current direction they're taking him works. But today's episode is brought to you by Gamersubs. Use the code COMICS at checkout or click the link down below to get yourself a waifu cup. New designs coming out every Friday right now. Get yourself some waifu cup apparel, or you can just get an energy drink that I find to be less chalky than its competitors. Gamersubs is one of the big sponsors here at Comic Storian, and they're what allows us to keep making these videos for you guys. So if you want to support us, you want to support them, check out the link down below. Find a flavor you like. I like a lot of them. I'm not going to say my favorite right now because it's a very memeable name. And because it's very memeable, I don't feel like saying it on my family-friendly channel. But you could figure it out if you look at their website. All right, let's get into the problem with John Kent. But in order to understand the problem with John Kent, you need to understand John Kent. Who is John Kent? Because a lot of people don't realize this, but John's a new character. So around 2015, 2016, there was an event known as the Convergence. Convergence was wrapping up what was remaining of the New 52 and what ended with the Earth 2 storyline. So Earth 2, for those who don't know, was a storyline that started up in the New 52 and it told of a world in which Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman had died immediately and how the world continued on with their new heroes. It's one of my favorite books that came out of New 52. Well, that story dwindled and went in weird directions and they got their own planet, but in order to wrap it up, they worked it into the event known as Convergence. Convergence was something that DC did. They basically came out with a bunch of two to three issue mini stories telling Elseworlds stories. And the idea was that they could prep all of these storylines and then move. Because I believe at the time they were either moving from New York to California or something else. But there was a reason why nobody would be in the offices for like two months. So their idea was to do Convergence. Convergence's main storyline was wrapping up the Earth 2 individuals. But the spinoff books was telling storylines of characters that had been erased in the New 52. Other timelines, other ideas. For you Marvel fans, think of Secret Wars. You know how we got Renew Your Vows where it told of that alternate storyline where Spider-Man and Mary Jane were able to have a kid and how that world would exist? They did that with Convergence. And one of the most popular ones in that timeline was the Superman and Lois with their child storyline. So they used Convergence basically to depower the superheroes, which was the excuse for Superman and Lois to have a child because Superman had no powers. So there was no threat of Kryptonian DNA or a kid kicking Lois in the stomach, which is a storyline that happened in the 90s and she died from the kick. It's another Elseworlds. If someone can tell me that storyline, I will so read that here, where Lois dies to, to what is essentially John Kent, but the baby of Super... I cannot... I don't know what storyline that is, but I do know that scene where the baby kicks with super strength and kills Lois. But anyway... To prevent all of those potential things from happening, they had their baby under the dome where they had no powers. That kid's name is John Kent in honor of his father, John. And that was the end of John Kent. He was a baby and the story ended. DC Rebirth kind of picked up shortly afterwards. And what happened is between Convergence and between DC Rebirth, there were some brief storylines involving Superman being trapped in the New 52 universe, but it wasn't the real Superman. It was a whole bunch of nonsense, and I'm not going to make our editor find all the crap that came out of Superman Reborn, which is what that storyline was. At the end of it, we had Superman, we had Lois, and we had 11-year-old John Kent. And the internet freaked out. We had a true Superboy, a son of Superman, and he was awesome. He was humble. He was a kid growing up on a farm. He didn't really understand his powers, and they were all coming in kind of like slowly. He was teaming up with Damian Wayne. They created the Super Sons. It was the Superboy we all wanted, and they got to go on amazing adventures. Now, overall, the story actually didn't progress very much for John Kent. He kind of just popped up everywhere. He met another uh, girl in the area. I forget her name, but like we imply that he might have a crush on her, but he was 11 years old. I think just having the girl nearby made him feel awkward. He would go hang out with uh, Damian Wayne. They would do Super Sun stuff. There was a point where he almost joined the Teen Titans, but Damian told him no, because it's the Teen Titans and he's 11. But don't worry, Damien just turned 13, so he was allowed in the Teen Titans. It was just fun, comical, kids kind of stories. 
But it was like pandering to the fans who wanted Superman and Super the Super Sons. We wanted Superboy to be growing up with Superman. We all loved it, and it was great. Now, the storyline involving John Kent and Damian Wayne has continued in out-of-continuity storylines. I think they do technically take place in continuity, but they're being told in the past. Because what actually happened to John Kent, Damien went off to do other things, I don't remember, and it doesn't matter for the sake of what I'm telling you here, but so... <laughs> So DC was having a bit of a weird time going on with this character known as Mr. Oz. All rumors and all speculation implies that Mr. Oz was supposed to be Ozymandias from the Watchmen universe. See, Rebirth was going on during that period involving Doomsday Clock, in which Dr. Manhattan had altered the timeline of our main superheroes in fudged and changed things. Then in Doomsday Clock, it was supposed to kind of like come together and figure it all out. Doomsday Clock almost got hit with, I think, a full year of delays. Because it was being delayed, it started to fall out of sync with main storylines going on in DC that were supposed to wrap into it. One of those, in theory, was supposed to be Mr. Oz, aka Ozymandias. The idea was that Doomsday Clock would take a year. At the end of that, everything would line up perfectly. But as Doomsday Clock dragged on, these stories all got altered and changed. We had weird stories pop up, like Heroes in Crisis and stuff like that to bridge the gap. It was when we started to see the chinks in the armor for DC, because Rebirth came out strong, Doomsday Clock was hitting huge numbers, they were taking the cake, they were winning, it was going well, and then all these delays started to hit them. And then we saw some of the creatives had moved over to the DC movie side, like Jeff Johns, and we saw, you know, problems with Dan DiDio and his current plans for 5G. Stuff like that started to poke its head. Stuff like that was starting to come out. John was a casualty of that situation. So, Mr. Oz turned out to not be Ozymandias. It turned out to be Jor-El, the father of Superman, a.k.a. John's grandfather. Dr. Manhattan had plucked him out of time, brought him to the future, and he was being driven insane by something lodged in his brain. I want to say it was a piece of kryptonite, but it was something. There was something in his brain making him crazy. He was defeated by Superman, and then he randomly came back when Brian Michael Bendis took over writing Superman. So, Jor-El's defeated. Mr. Oz is out of the picture. Brian Michael Bendis takes over writing the book. The book no longer focuses on Superman and, Su and his son, John Kent. Instead, the book now focuses on Superman. In order to remove John Kent and Lois Lane from Superman's life so that Brian Michael Bendis can write a story about Superman, which, like, if you go back to my video about families, it creates a problem. So Brian Michael Bendis' plan was to remove them. So he made Lois leave Superman, and Jor-El showed up and took John Kent into space to teach him how the universe works. All right, on paper, that's not a terrible idea. Jor-El and John Kent go missing. They get sucked into a wormhole, and he ages up six years. He comes back 17. He basically spends six years stuck on Earth-3, battling against Ultraman, being stuck in a volcano while Ultraman tortured him, okay? Which is something you would think would reflect a lot more in John, but no, he's, he's good. He's chill. You know, he's like, I was tortured by my evil version of my dad. That's not injustice, but it's Ultraman. But yeah, it's okay. I got better. So anyway, he comes back. He's now 17. These stories still could be interesting. Superman missing six years of his son's life, and eventually they could revert John back to being 11, bring back the Super Sons, and everything's good to go. But that's when DC made an interesting decision. So now John at this point is like 17 and the entire fan base is like, what are you doing? We finally had a Superboy that was the child of Superman growing up and learning his powers and teaming up with the son of Batman. Why has he been aged up to 17? Now the concept in general could have worked as long as they were able to bring him back. But that was when we had an interesting decision from DC. DC decided to line everything up with 5G, Future State, and Infinite Frontier. They were trying to move in this direction and do some new stuff. As a part of that, the idea was to remove Superman from the table. So Superman himself, Kal-El, goes to War World, where he gets stranded out there, turned into a gladiator, and it's a pretty cool story from what I've read, but I'm not going to lie, I have not sat down and just read it all the way through. What I have read, I enjoyed... I intend on like reading it in a little bit and then maybe covering it on the channel, but we'll see. This left John as the Superman of the world. He was Superman. So what happened is that was when they decided that John's sexuality was going to be explored. John was decided to be bi and he started to date Jay Nakamura. That's the character that that is he's currently dating. That's what's currently going on with John. DC took this as a chance to get marketing headlines. Superman is bi which I don't agree with because what that does when you do that kind of a thing, 
you're not specifying that you've basically created a new character and made them bi. John being bi, in my opinion, isn't that big of a deal. But when you want to say Superman, everyone assumes Kal-El. And you have people like Dean Cain, who starred as Superman forever ago, coming out on Twitter and being like, what is going on? It, it was a big deal, and anybody who's reading comics knows it was a big deal because it was promoted as Superman is bi. Once again, I don't think John being bi is inherently wrong. But that's also not what the actual problem is with John Kent right now. So DC decided that John Kent would be Superman, and that John Kent would be bi, and that Superman would be off the table and out the door. kal has gone. But here's the issue, and this is the problem. We all know kal has not gone. You've created your own redundancy intentionally to gain newspaper headlines. You didn't say Superboy is bi, and then you explored that storyline. You didn't say John Kent is bi, and then explored that storyline. The headline is Superman is bi. Superman has to come back at some point. DC's never going to put Clark Kent in the drawer and call it a day. Clark Kent is out of here. We're no longer covering him. That's the same thing with Bruce Wayne. They're never getting rid of Bruce Wayne. I don't know where Dan's going to plug this little extra, but we talked about it a little bit afterwards. He brought up a great example. So Nightwing became Batman. That worked. Why? Because when Batman came back, Nightwing could go back to being Nightwing. The story worked for that because Nightwing was his own character and established as such. John... I don't think even officially took the name Superboy, but how do you go from being Superboy to Superman? You can't go back to Superboy. You, you, that's the worst part about his naming convention and the redundancy of it. Because I guarantee when this was pitched, they were like, oh, it's going to be like when Nightwing took over for Batman, which works because Nightwing can just go back to being Nightwing. Like, how do you go? Oh, I'm 17. I'm now a man. Well, no, son, I've come back from my weird adventure doing gladiatorial fights on War World. You're now a boy again. Drat, Dad! Now I'm Superboy! You can't do that. And what are you going to name him otherwise? Supergirl's taken, plus that would be weird. Like, you, you got to call him Soups? No, like, it doesn't work. Anyway, Dan brought up a really good point on that, and I just wanted to let you guys know, like, we've thought about these things, and it just, it doesn't work. Anyway. Cut back to wherever we're cutting back to. So we've gotten rid of Kal-El, and we've got a run of comics that you're trying to get people to read. And it it did well. For those who are wondering, I actually looked up the numbers now that the, the book got canceled. When the first issues came out, the book was pulling down about 65,000 to 70,000 sales a book. It was doing very well. That puts it in the uh, 10 to 25 range. So basically, comic book sales get broken down into a couple of brackets. You have the top 10. Top 10 is traditionally books that sell over 100,000. They'll do 100,000, they'll do 200,000. Some of those do 500,000 like King Spawn. Beneath that, 11 to 25, on average, those books sell 50,000 to 70,000. That's the range that they typically sell. Beneath the, the top 25, they start to falter down to, you know, the 40,000s, the 30,000s and stuff like that. We haven't had the sales of like millions of comics sold like the 90s in a long time. And it's an entire different video's worth of reasoning why I think that is. But I don't think it is anything to do with the storylines because we're still seeing bigger and bigger sales numbers i honestly think it has to do with the fact that there's so much more content to consume as an individual in the world i mean you can choose to go spend 4.99 on a comic book or you can watch tiktok for you know five hours and see people's weird food recipes and people dancing a lot of times the modern day individual chooses tiktok but that's that's a whole like i said totally different video i'm not going on that big of a tangent trust me so regardless of how sales were back then Right now, top 10 is 100,000 to about 500,000. John Kent, well, Superman, son of Kal-El, the book here, was falling into the top 25 sold. It was in that bracket, okay? So it wasn't doing poorly. But again, the issue isn't that it sold well or sold okay. The issue is that you created a redundancy because what happened when the sales started to dip? So traditionally, a comic book has great sales in the first 10 issues, and then they normally start to fall off unless you're some kind of a fluke. Batman always sells. Immortal Hulk sold like crazy for the 50 issues that it existed. But those are outliers. That doesn't happen that often that one book can maintain sales all the way through. The same thing applies to TV shows. Every season, traditionally, a show is supposed to lose viewers because people are aging out of it, new viewers aren't getting on board, and that's what happens with comic books. If I tell you to go read Superman, Son of Kal-El, issue 11, sometimes you're going to go, oh, maybe I should read 1 through 10. As a fan of Assassin's Creed and Final Fantasy, I actually have to answer that question a lot. Benny, 
Uh, you say Final Fantasy 15 is great. Should I go play 1 through 14? To which I say, no, they don't relate at all. Numbering causes problems for people that don't know what's going on. So the inevitable happened. Superman, Son of Kal-El began to fall down. On top of that, we're trying to reinvent DC. The soft reboot, start the line over, I don't know what you want to call it kind of a thing. Dawn of DC is the 2023 initiative. And the idea behind the Dawn of DC is to bring DC back to its roots. To give us a pseudo-rebirth era. We can't crisis the things. We can't reboot from square one, but we can basically treat everything like we're starting it all over. That's a soft reboot. That's what DC's doing with Donna DC. Well, in order to bring back readers that we've lost and bring in new readers, we need to bring back the people that you know. On top of the fact that James Gunn is coming out with a movie about Superman called Legacy or something like that, but it's about Superman. DC wants a Kal-El book front and center called Superman. That's what they want. So... What happens to John? John gets bumped. Doesn't matter that his comic book uh, issue 18 fell down to about 36,000 sales. Yes, it fell down, but that doesn't matter. It was This was going to happen no matter what. I'm actually surprised Superman, Son of Kal-El sold to issue 18 because you didn't have a Superman book. They were using action comics as a Superman book, but that doesn't say Superman. Superman is the book. So they've rebooted Superman. Superman's back to being a new number one, starting the adventure all over. We're picking up where we kind of left off, but we're moving forward. People have powers. Lex has evolved. And what does John Kent do? He's in the corner. Literally, in the first two issues, which are currently out as of the time of me recording this video, he is in the corner of Metropolis, helping Supergirl stop the onslaught of parasite demons. That's the problem with John Kent, because what they decided to do was age him up, get headlines, and regardless of it being a good story or not, and on a personal level, I wasn't actually a fan of Superman, Son of Kal-El. And the reason is, a lot of political environmental stuff. And I just didn't speak to me. I wasn't interested. That was actually my complaint with it, that he was trying to be like this political activist. And I was like, that's, I, don't, I don't want that. I'm fine. Um, I have no issues with, like I said, him, him and Jay. That's fine. The other issue for me was the activism stuff. I'm like, I don't care. But anyway, John's now shoved to the corner of the Superman book. He doesn't get to be a part of it anymore in the same level. Superman is about Kal-El. So what do you do with John? On now because you put him in this position where you can't just de-age him. It's the same issue that DC had when they decided to take Wally West and make him a young black individual where they tried to steal into that Miles Morales money. Well, you can't just get rid of Wa black Wally West. That's going to cause like a whole number of problems. And you can't get rid of your aged up bisexual Superman now because that's going to cause a whole bunch of problems that you don't want. You're doing this stuff to get headlines. You don't want the counter headline. Oh, they whitewashed Wally West back. Or, oh, they turned the only LGBTQ Superman into a cis white male again. You don't want those headlines. So what do we do now? We have a guy named Superman who got, is getting his own limited edition book where they're going to try to change his powers into blue lightning, which is a weird thing that happened to Superman back in the 90s, and that's a totally different video also. And that's the problem with John. We can't just go back. They've kind of like done this weird middling ground thing where the Super Sons stories have continued. But don't worry, we've still got our current 17-year-old John Kent, and now Kal-El's back, and we have limited series for John. John had so much potential, they didn't need to rush him to 17 years old. We could have just told more stories of him being 11 and growing up. Instead of the audience getting to get a brand new character that we get to grow up with, like Miles Morales, who we're growing up with. Like, you, if you read when he first started to now, even though it's a small amount of time, he's growing up. We don't get that with John. Damian Wayne finally gets to mature in age in the last two years. We don't get that with John. No, John was taken from being a unique character, Superboy, with his own stories, his own friends, his own everything, and just got turned into Superman. When redundancy is your biggest problem, why do you insist on making more? Now, my idea to fix John Kent, and I had this idea, but I don't think they'll ever do it. Since John Kent was sent over to Earth-3, and he was stuck in a volcano for supposedly six years, what if that never happened? What if the John Kent we've had on this planet, the 17-year-old John Kent, is from Earth-3? Here, because his dad was a villain, and he wanted to redeem himself by living under the proper Superman's eyes. And the actual John Kent 
the actual 11 year old John Kent is still out there either on earth three, which I don't think would line up with our, with the, with the guy coming to redeem himself. But I think basically you could, what if Jor-El and John Kent have just been in space this whole time? They didn't even know that a 17 year old John Kent came back, that this John Kent is the hero of earth three. And he wanted to come here to see what his dad could be like if he was a good guy. And now he just lives on this planet. And then we get back the other John and we just have them both. That's my fix for it. Cause then you could continue to tell your stories of 17 year old John Kent trying to be a political activist, try going on dates with Jay. That's great. People who love that the 40,000 to 70,000 people who bought that comic love that. Cool. And then the Super Sons book, which if you're wondering, which sold 100,000 when it came out in 2017, uh, we, th those of us who like that one can read that book and we're good. I fixed it, DC. Uh, send me my royalty checks. That would be great. Anyway, guys, that's what I think the problem is. I've seen the comments on the latest Superman videos or the shorts that I make and people are like, oh, oh my God, I can't read this because they turned him by. I, that I don't think is the issue. The problem is you turned him into Superman. That's the problem. In the worst time ever, like at least the redundancies of the Flash family have come up over the course of 30 years. 30 years that happened. And then they decided to bring them all back as the Flash family. Well, the redundancy with Superboy was done to him in the last five years intentionally. That just doesn't make any sense to me. And that's the problem with John Kent, in my opinion. Uh, I have not read the new book. It's supposed to be coming out. He's going to go back to Earth 3, and he's going to battle against Ultraman and go to the Injustice universe. That sounds cool as hell, and I will definitely be covering it here on the channel. But other than that, that's all I got for you today. A shorter one, because John Kent's history is five years old. It, he's not been around that long, everyone. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like these problem with videos, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you next time right here at Comic Story.